You've hit the wrong flight to terrorize! Blood Red Sky, released in 2021 and is directed by Peter Thoreth, who is also behind such films like Not My Day, Golden Times, and The Last Bull. And this film is starring Roland Moller, Harry Balmaster, Chidi Ajufo, Alexander Shear, and Dominic Purcell. And the reason why we're talking about Blood Red Sky today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my longtime subscribers and contributors on this channel who is constantly giving me just outlandish, out-there films that I've never heard of. Dr. Camp, thank you very much for your recommendation. If any of you want to be like Dr. Camp and help support me and contribute to this channel, you can hit the PayPal link that is on the homepage of my YouTube channel. And however much you want to throw my way, if you have a movie recommendation, attach that to that, and I will watch it, review it, and give you a little shout-out, just like what I did with Dr. Camp here. Thank you very much. And my god, these terrorists have picked the wrong flight to mess on. A group of terrorists have hijacked a German plane on its way to New York City and is holding everyone hostage and is set a whole bunch of bombs of nerve gas that they're gonna explode when the plane lands in, in New York and, and terrorizing and things. But what the terrorists don't realize is that they have the worst luck on the frickin planet because they have hijacked the only plane on the earth that has a vampire as a passenger. So now the terrorists are about to find out just how hard it is to hijack a plane with a vampire on board. And I'm making it sound like the film is told through the perspective of the terrorists. It's not. It's told through the perspective of this mother and her child. The mother being the one who has the vampire infection inside of her. That's why she's going to New York is because there's a doctor there who is going to try some experiments to cure the hunger, to cure this disease that has infested her. But then all of a sudden terrorists take over the plane they shoot her because she wants to take care of her son and because she starts smelling blood everywhere she kind of creeps into the underholdings and actually kind of thinking about it this movie is actually like executive decision but with vampires and I gotta say I'm laughing a lot through this movie not that it's a comedy this is actually a really good horror film it's actually very terrifying but just laughing at the situation for the terrorists <laughs> Because, I mean, there's so many planes <laughs> and plane trips all over the world. And the one, they pick the one that had the vampire on it. It's like, you know, you did something and now this is karma biting all of you guys in the ass. Now, I was a little weary at the very beginning of this film because... It's really told in a non-linear structure. The movie begins and the plane has landed. And we see, actually, who the one or I guess one out of two of the survivors are and then we go back in time and we see the journey that everyone took to get on the plane and everything that happened so throughout the film I go like well I know that that person survives and that kid survives this whole trip so a lot of the tension I feel like is not going to be as impactful for me as it would have if I didn't know that, if this was just a straight through linear structure. But it is a brief little prologue scene that is only maybe, maybe five minutes long, and then you get into the main chunk of the movie, and at some point you just completely forget that that prologue even happened until we actually get to where the timelines meet and then we're caught up. I was a little worried about it though, not gonna lie. This movie turned out to be great. I was entertained, I was enthralled the entire time, I was thrilled the entire time. I think the effects, the makeup effects, the special effects that they use for the vampire actually look really cool. In real life, like on set, on the day, it probably looked ridiculous. You had the ears kind of flopping back and forth, doing like the alfalfa thing. But how the movie was shot and the, the use of why those ears were kind of moving back and forth like that, it made sense, and it looked really good in this movie. I wasn't laughing at all at that. Even though I'm sure the actors on set on the day were probably just cracking up, being like, wow, that looks frickin' ridiculous. Hopefully this movie's great. And it really was. It's a bloodbath. Don't get me wrong. So if you're not used to blood, or if you don't like seeing blood, I mean, it's a vampire movie, so you should just know that blood's gonna be involved in it some way, shape, or form. But it is everywhere in here, so... If you're queasy about blood, you're probably not going to want to watch this movie. Which is a shame, I'm a little queasy when it comes to blood, 
but I got past it because I feel like the story here and the tension here is super gripping and I was just enthralled the entire time. And Perry Baumeister who plays our, our lead woman, the mother, the, the vampire who is trying to repress the vampire urges inside of her, I think she gives a brilliant performance. You see the, the pain and hatred that she has towards herself. She has shame that she allowed this thing to happen to her. And it's heartbreaking to see that because you can tell how much she loves her son. And when it comes to the mindset of when she turns, when she turns full vampire, she still has that mindset of, I, I love my son, I care for my son, and I'm doing this for my son. But you still get that overwhelming just blanket and tarp that is over her of shame. She's just ashamed that she is this thing, this monster, and that she has to do what she's doing. She has to drink blood. She has to give herself these very painful injections. She's ashamed of herself. It's heartbreaking to see and it's a beautiful performance. What is not a beautiful performance is the lead terrorist guy, the flight attendant guy with the blonde hair. I, I don't know his name and I, I don't care to look it up. I really don't. But to quote Tony Perkis from Heavyweights. No, I must say the villain was a bit over the top. He was channeling his best Heath Ledger's Joker, where he's kind of just like, oh, I'm crazy, and I'm gonna do whatever I want, and say whatever I want, and I'm gonna wave my arms around, because that's what Heath Ledger's Joker did. I'm like, dude, we get it. You're a psycho. You're crazy. Okay, move along. You're eating up the scenery. You're eating everything up. Just... Settle it down now. But speaking of the scenery, I do appreciate that this felt like an actual plane, that this felt like an actual plane ride. I made the comparison that this movie is basically Executive Decision, but with vampires. If you watch Executive Decision from, I want to say, 1996 or 1997, that plane is really huge. Like, people are standing, like, shoulder to shoulder and having full-blown conversations standing up in the cockpit. When in reality, a basic plane like this, everything is cramped, everything is crowded. And it feels like that. It feels like you're just in this small little tube in the middle of the sky. You know, watching films like this, or films like Train to Busan, or maybe World War Z, and seeing just, like, outbreaks and viruses and vampires break out on a small contained space like this, I mean, that's really the thing to be most afraid of when you go to flying now. It's not the actual, like, crashing and the plane giving out or anything. No, it's the fact that, oh, I'm in this small, tiny little contained space, and if there is a zombie apocalypse, if there is a vampire somewhere in the back, and everyone starts going crazy, I have nowhere to go. I am on one side of the plane wall, and the clouds are on the other. I cannot run anywhere. I am screwed. Blood Red Sky, I think, is a great vampire tale. And during a time where we have vampire properties all over the place, TV shows, books like crazy, films like crazy, it kind of felt like... Not that this, like, reinvented the wheel or anything, but it did feel like a breath of fresh air. This is a fresh little take and a fresh little story in the vampire lore that we have had over, gosh, hundreds of years. It was refreshing, and I really enjoyed it. It's a great thriller, and I recommend everyone check it out. It's on Netflix right now. I'm going to give Blood Red Sky four and a half out of five Blu-rays. It's good. It's good. So guys, if you've seen Blood Red Sky, what did you think about it? What is your favorite vampire film property? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm released my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.